Okay, so um, this is the last. This is the last session of this conference. You could you can call it a post mortem, um, <coughs> and um, it just to kind of maybe draw some um, finishing or maybe opening thoughts, and also to say that um, that will take about twenty minutes, and we can, if we want, relocate to the bar at the end of the street, yeah? So just, just uh, on to the left of the theater, there is a bar and it will be open from six and we can have a drink. Um, and when you leave the bar, then don't exit through the same way we came, but just go around the building uh, because it will be closed. You will go around the building and you will be back uh, at the main road. So I hope you will join us uh, for a drink in the end of these uh, really exciting, uh, fascinating two days. So um, I will start with uh, brief closing remarks and then I will uh, ask uh, Jenny Golding to contribute uh, her thoughts. So um, here, is what I th here is what I thought. I obviously didn't listen to all the presentations but I tried to, um, to get the sense of uh, most of the things that go on. And it seems to me that there is a new <coughs> wind blowing through this question of photography very broadly it can be kind of put like put like this that until recently it seemed that most of the questions about photography are more or less settled there were sev there are several very well established approaches to the photographic image um, so for instance um, the, there is the sociology the sociological approach in the style of George of, of uh, John Berger for whom um, the photograph is a site of uh, social relations and uh, um, kind of where um, hierarchies and the power relations that operate in society get reflected and can be <coughs> exposed. Um, for um, other people, a photograph uh, or a photographic image has to be understood through linguistic or semiotic codes and uh, that, you know, in the style of uh, Victor Bergin, for instance, and that obviously leads to, uh, to a very particular form of, form of analysis um, uh, based on um, semi-signification and uh, semi kind of Sassurian uh, semiotics. And um, then there is, let's say, the phenomenological approach that keeps asking what my body knows of photography in, this sti in the style of uh, Roland Barthes. And then, of course, there are those that say that uh, Photography has uh, no essence, like uh, John Tagg, and there are those that say that photography's essence is that it is an aesthetic object, like uh, Michael Fried. However, despite all the uh, ostensible diversity of these approaches, the one thing they have in common is that they all look at photography as dealing with a space which is external to the photographic image. In fact, you could say that all these approaches privilege space over time. The space which is external to the photograph and in some way gets encapsulated or framed or um, kind of condensed into the two-dimensional surface of the photograph. So the photograph always stands in relation of something which is <coughs> external to it and outside to it. So this, that's, that was how the table was set for quite a long time and everything was um, good and well in the uh, photography department uh, in the land. Um, and, um, and then something started to shift, something started to happen. And what, what happens is that it's par partly to do with the advance of various technologies that brought in algorithms and coding and computation and networks that uh, into the photographic image that made this obsession with the, with the optical surface, with the visual surface, um, not sustainable anymore. And partly um, the other shift that happened um, through <coughs> affect theory made people think more about time and maybe that photography has something to do with time and not only with space. And but what kind of time? It's the, the lived time. So, so the whole focus of the political discussion seems now to be divided between the photograph as a way to deal with 
the space which is external to the photograph, and that is one form of politics, which can be roughly named the dialectical approach. And there is another one that deals with the photograph as encapsulating its own internal relation to duration or to time. But by duration, I don't necessarily mean the Bergsonian notion, but some kind of sensuous, um, erotic, physical, or, 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 or kind of touchable relationship to time. And it seems to me that in this conference, these lines are being drawn quite sharply, which I think is really rather interesting because it seems that the real discourse of photography is only being born right now because now you have the option. You either look at the photograph <coughs> as a window onto the external world, and that can lead up to many interesting discussions and arguments, or you look at the photograph as a particular way to deal with time, particular notion of the photographic time. So that seems to me that that is the place where we are right now. Go on. What would you like? Oh, with what you would like to disagree? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. No. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody, uh, and of course, mainly uh, Daniel Rubenstein, who did a brilliant job, and uh, the chairs uh, as well, who were absolutely fantastic in all the different ways. Um, yes, I had a couple things that I want to say. Ba basically, um, Sorry about this little arrangement here on the desk. It's, uh, I have a bit of a hyperglycemic reaction, so if it sounds a little bit like <coughs> that, you'll, you'll understand, or you'll, you can read the symbol <laughs> if you keep saying it. About 10 years ago, no, more than that, maybe 20 years ago, I bought a car that, I mean, I'm an American, so you get a car when you're like three. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> you certainly get interested about that. But anyway, I bought a sports car. I bought what's called an RX-7, uh, which they don't have over here. They have some version of it over here, but it's hideous, so don't go looking it up, because you'll just be appalled. This looked more like a Cobra or a Stingray, but the 1964, 1963 model. Now, I say this because I loved it. And in fact, I can tell you that when I was, I think, about four, yeah, I was about four, three or four, I was in a car showroom with my parents, and they were debating about getting a car. And I walked over to one of the sports car coupes, and I saw that the keys were in the car. And I still remember this as a, as a child. And I turned on the car. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fantastic. And everybody flipped out. There was a child behind the wheel. <laughs> I was driving it toward the window, you know, and stuff like that. Now, so I, I give you this example because technology can be a lot of fun. You know, and you shouldn't forget that part. You know, the thing about the camera in 18-whatever it was, 39 or whatever, came, it, it, on one level, it was just amazing <laughs> that you could do this kind of thing. And I think that the level of amazement sort of got carried away in a certain sense. It got frozen, and then people started to become very serious with the furrowed brow and the, you know, the one I call the monobrow of philosophy. You know, these guys were very intense. You know, they had to have social agency, or, you know, and they couldn't just do something for fun, or, you know, whatever the problems were. There were so many of them. Now, what I found fantastic about this conference is that people did not forget about the fun, did not forget about the curiosity, which I think is absolutely essential for any of this kind of thing. No matter what sort of, let's say, school of thought we're trying to deal with, at least maintain your sense of humor, if not fun, mm -hmm. and your sense of curiosity. It'll help you, because there's a big labyrinth of, of of stuff you have to trawl through. Having said that, also don't be afraid to really be intelligent about what you're doing. As artists, don't be afraid to talk about your work. It's not gonna kill it. What's gonna kill your work is that if you take a, a thought, a concept, and you try and apply it, I tell you this as a philosopher, or you take an art object and you try and use it as an example of a concept. Those two different ways, which are actually quite similar, could go off on a ship together and form their own hell and <laughs> do whatever they want to do to themselves, right? <coughs> what we've got work to do. And I think that what this conference has done was to give you a banquet. In fact, that's what people kept saying, there's so much stuff, and I kept hearing Daniel going, yes, that's the idea, you know? <laughs> so much food, so much food, the Jewish mother, you know? It's like, you know, eat, eat, you know, have some. You know, and I think that it was very much 
for me, that just that's the first thing I want to say. Do not forget about, you know, again, I said this in the last seminar, the last thing we just had, but, you know, to follow Foucault's thing, don't, uh, don't think that just because you're doing hard things, you can't know how to laugh. That, you know, to be a militant doesn't mean you have to be sad all the time. To be a militant also means you can be an artist. In fact, you ought to be an artist, or at least have some style in your protest. You know, um, I mean, <coughs> sorry, that was just done. Okay, so that was the first thing I wanted to hit up. The second thing is, is that there is a seismic change happening right now. And uh, in 1964, or 63, somewhere in there, uh, a person named Thomas Kuhn, K-U-H-N, wrote a kind of interesting little book that kind of fell out called The Structural Scientific Revolution. And what he basically said there was that there's a moment, it's almost like when, you know, in a magic trick where you have, you know, dinner plates and you, you take the thing off and all the plates remain the same. Th there's like this moment going on where someone's taking the, the thing and going like that, see where the plates land. Now, what happened, what Kuhn argued in that book, and one of the things he argued, is that these revolutions happen in very uneven ways. The, the whole paradigm shift is, is, is shifting, but it doesn't like shift like Tuesday at four o'clock paradigm shift. It, 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 there are these little ways that happen, and this is one of the little ways. It's it, when taking into consideration morphogenetic, robotic, MRI scans. You were saying, you know, the question of time. I would say, I mean, I go back and forth on this. I go back and forth on the question of time. I don't do age, so you know, I've, I've already gotten into that one. But you know, when I think about curve time and speed and you know dimension, this is, you know, I have a PhD student right now who's a, a visual artist uh, working length based. I mean, anyway, I'll talk about photography anyway. In fact, no photographer I know uses the term to describe themselves any longer, so it's just like, okay, great, whatever. He's calling it palimpsestual. And what he does, he doesn't talk about layers, he doesn't talk about time, it's not really even dimensions, it's this kind of weird infection, this virality that happens. Um, and I like how he's organizing this. And I found that happening in this, this conference, that there, there's kind of palimpsestious moments going on. Where some of it works, some of it doesn't work. Play with it, be led by how you're trying to figure this out. Because after all, I mean, at least photography has now freed from its shackles of, you know, just being, you know, the, you know, um, as long as you want a car and it runs, you know, it's, I don't see it in any color, as, as Henry Ford said, as long as it's black. You know, it's like, it, now it's been freed from that. You know, that doesn't mean that it doesn't do that. It doesn't mean you can't archive or you can't, document or you can't do this and that. It has nothing to do with it. It has to do with the fact that it's, it's, ena it's an enabling piece. And I would go further to say, and this is point number two, that like I said in the opening uh, remark, or opening salvo, photography, I think, names, I if we're going to retain that name at all, names the new, well, whatever, I hate the word new, that's what it's kind of, but anyway, the uh, form of, of post-postmodernism. It takes poetic it takes materiality, it takes energy, it takes technologies, it takes you know, whatever, and it starts to play with them in really ways that we haven't even thought about. So to me, that's very interesting, and this was another one of the salvos that you know, was out. The last thing I would say is, apart from don't lose any sense of, don't lose your sense of humor, don't lose your sense of urgency, uh, we're all living in very you know, challenging times. They're not as challenging as they were in the 30s if you were in uh, Germany, and they're not as challenging <coughs> right now if you're in the Middle East. I mean, it's a challenging time in this country, but you know, there are other places that are even more challenging. We're not gonna do a one down from here if it's more challenging somewhere <laughs> else, but I'm just saying there's an urgency going on. So don't be afraid to be political. Don't forget that one of the reasons people hung on to the notion of photography as, I don't know, archival, was so that there would be this secret way of, of banking memory so that you could pull it out and go, see, this is what your grandparents did. This is how they fought the revolution. You know, get with it, people, you know, this kind of, so don't be afraid. You know, don't, don't put it to the feet of photography to do all this work for you. Do it yourselves. I mean, we, we've got to be political. And to me, this is a highly political conference in an environment, which I already found out in one of the seminars, where the university decided to arrest its students. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're living in challenging times. And so just don't be afraid. It's going to get worse before it gets better. 
But, you know, don't tempt words too much. Just keep trying to figure out how to go forward. And that, that would be my, my main two points. And that's, that's yep. what it was. So, uh, well, I hope we didn't slaughter too many sacred cows, or I at did. least if we did, we, <laughs> done, we died according to the proper religious rituals. That's right, yeah. that's right. <laughs> and um, I also want to thank uh, not only the, the wonderful chairs and everyone who came and made it such a fantastic uh, conference, but I also want to, to, thank, to thank the MA photography students who played pivotal role, not only in organizing this conference, but also in providing the, the intellectual energy behind it. So thank you very much. <laughs> the bar is open. <laughs>